everybody. Welcome to the Single Dad Podcast. Uh, I'm Joseph Rochelle. This is my good buddy, Jeff Sherrill. Am I saying that right? Sherrill. Sherrill. That's right. Like for, I, like for real. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I like that. That's okay, good. Cool. I use that. Yeah, I used to start wearing a big oversized hat. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I started cutting good music too. There you go. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, yeah, that might be, a, that, those shoes might, you might, be, might want to start with the hat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just smash my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Wanted to kick off this podcast with Jeff because uh, one, he's been helping me to hone the single dad brand and the message. Um, you know, I, I've been through so much uh, in in the ways of custody battles mm -hmm. and divorce mm -hmm. and and um, you know emotional trauma mm -hmm. that are that's relationship um, centric. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're going through those situations, it's, it's, it's a tidal wave of emotions. Because one, you are dealing with the heartbreak and loss of uh, a, you know, a woman that you have pledged to love forever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so there's, there's that de-evolution of relationship. But then you also are dealing with, you have, if you have kids, um, the love that you have for your kids and the letting go of the future that you had envisioned and worked so hard to build, you know, for them. Mm -hmm. You know, me as a child of divorce, uh, I never wanted to get divorced, mm -hmm. right? I, ne I, I wanted to give my kids that Norman Rockwell, you know, family, uh, which is so rare these days. And it was, uh, I, you know, I did, I did so much wrong. I think I did like everything wrong, especially in, in the first time I went through it because I've been through it twice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just handled every situation wrong and it which just made it worse and it made it worse for me. And, you know, I really go into that in the single dad book. Uh, the first one, you know, field manual for today's single father, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, I call it a field manual. I kind of designed the whole thing like a field manual from the military because I was in the army when I was going through it. And, you know, I really draw a lot of, um, a lot of my experience from that time yeah. because that's, I mean, that's where it was. Yeah. So, and, and kudos to you for doing that. You know, uh, you, as you said, just like, there was so much that I look back and I, and I feel like I didn't do correctly, but let me take note of that, take note of it, what I would have done and what I did do, what maybe I would have done different. So for a lot of guys, and you see that all through comments, especially in the military that, you know, it's just really tough on a relationship. And then, you know, those guys not only come back with, you know, the challenges that you, you bring home with war, but then now you have a whole nother world of, of pain and hurt to, to unpack. So this is gonna be very helpful to them. I hope so. I mean, that, that's, that's the whole reason I made it, you know, right in the introduction, I say what this book is not, mm -hmm. you know, this is not, a misogynistic revenge on my exes. I hate women book. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely the furthest thing from it. Um, as a matter of fact, that's why it took me 20 years mm -hmm. to even write it. Mm -hmm. Because well, I guess not 2018. <laughs> you had to but cut all that out. I, yeah, I, I had to process through and make right. sure my motivations were proper because I didn't want to write that book. You know, in the beginning, you want to write that book, yeah. but that, that's not serving anybody. Right. And and honestly, and this is the thing to keep in mind. If that is your motivation right now, nothing wrong with that being your motivation, especially if it's, everything's fresh. Totally understandable. And, and honestly, if it wasn't, if you didn't feel that way, I might wonder if there was some deeper problem. Right, right. And maybe you weren't facing something. So if this is fresh, find yourself, take a deep breath, find yourself a good book, maybe single dad, um, find yourself a, a brother, a, a, a close circle of people you can trust, uh, that you can voice how you're feeling, what you're going through. And you don't need, it doesn't need to make sense to you yet. You don't need to be able to understand how you're feeling. You know, the first thing that I ever learned in, in my youth that was really powerful for me, I've never forgotten, was just identify how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you can say the words, I'm angry, mm -hmm. that, that is, that is actually very cathartic to know because most of the time we're just breaking stuff and we don't know why, <laughs> right? Yeah. But if you can go, well, I'm angry. Oh, oh well, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, our emotions are designed by God to serve us. Mm -hmm. If they're not serving you, then you're either using them improperly or you don't need it. Like guilt. Yeah. Guilt is not of God. That is a that is a feeling straight from the devil. And God doesn't have any amount of time in the penalty box that we have to sit 
after stumbling and falling. Yeah. He wants you to dust yourself up, get back on your feet, keep walking and trust him to, to work it out. Yeah. You know? Well, and it is not good for man to be alone. And part of that reason is because just as you said, find a, you know, a trusted person that can hear you out. You, you can just lay it out to you, right? And, and somebody that can sit with you in, in the moment, in the experience and, you know, mourn with the mourners. Like who can sit there and like, be there with me and just hear me. Let me, who can I trust to just accept me for the ugliness that is going to come out. And then as well as be there to, to say, yeah, man, I feel you. Yeah. I can understand. I would feel the same way. You know, now what do you want to do now? What's the best way to go and, 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 and continue to take those steps in the right direction, picking the pieces back up, you know? Yeah. And that's such an important thing. If you, if you are a uh, accountability partner to someone, mm -hmm. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is just sit there and listen, validate how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the worst things that you can do to somebody that's going through heartache is try to explain to them why they shouldn't feel that way. Yeah. You want to push somebody away? That's the best way to do yeah. it. You know, uh, I remember when I was going through this past summer and it was really rough. One of the greatest things that Scott Strong did for me mm -hmm. was he called me up he, he, and the first thing we did, he had me over for dinner. The first thing he did was let me vent, mm -hmm. let me talk. <clears throat> and he told me, he's like, man, yeah, that's terrible. You have every right to feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know, and once I was able to get it out and he validated and allowed me to feel angry and mad and all that kind of stuff. It was like, okay, now that you've gotten it out, how would you like to feel? Mm -hmm. That's good. Right? That's good. Because just the, because you, you were feeling a certain way doesn't mean that that has to be where you stay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You don't have to stay stuck and you don't have to stay and sit there and let it continue to, to circle around, you know, down in a bad place, down the toilet, as a friend of mine says, and you, ex Exactly right. They're your feelings. They're very real to you. And so to say, hey, yeah, let's lay it out all on the table. Let's get it all out, right? You know, let's, you know, we've all had that late night of drinking. Like you're getting all the poison out. <laughs> okay, now I feel better. I've gotten it out. I've processed. And the word emotion is, you know, emotion. So you're moving those feelings. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's men for the most part. We uh, we're afraid of feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. Right. So when they come up and we have to start talking about, it, I was like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. You know, like I'm watching Ray Donovan right now. Right. <laughs> and this man does not deal with feelings at all. Um, you know, and I can relate to that so much, but as I started to realize that feelings are just tools in my arsenal. And once I'm able to, you know, hone my skill and, and yield that sword mm -hmm. of anger, mm -hmm. jealousy, um, and know the right things to do with it. Right. You know, the, the, the emotion of jealousy is nothing more than a giant beacon telling you that you are in a toxic relationship and you need to get out. The right person will not bring or, uh, 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 what's the word? Evoke. Evoke the feelings of jealousy. Whether they're doing something or not, it has nothing to do with their behavior. It has to do with the fact that you are feeling a certain way when you are around a certain person. And if you're feeling that way, that is, it's always an internal thing. It's not them, right? So it's not, it doesn't matter if they're cheating. It doesn't matter what they're doing. They, they could absolutely be earning the, uh, the effect of your jealousy, but that it's not about them. It's about you. If you are feeling jealousy, not, you got two things to to identify. Number one, you're in a toxic situation that's out of your control. Get out. Doesn't mean you have to get divorced. Doesn't mean it just means you, you need to physically be somewhere else for a while while you deal with what it is that's bringing about that feeling of jealousy mm -hmm. and apply that same methodology to every feeling you have, including joy. Okay. If you are with somebody that is helping you emote, evoke, evoke the feelings of joy, well, then that should tell you that's the place you want to be. Right. Right. So now your response to the feeling that you're having is either fight or flight, mm -hmm. stay or go, mm -hmm. you know, healthy or unhealthy. And then you can respond accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and fruit of the spirit, right? Love, right. joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness through self-control. So, right. and I love this, this, uh, this concept that you brought up or this, there's perspective of the emotions are like weapons, right? Um, which can be used for good or evil, mm -hmm. right? And just think about it like, you know, 
you know, John Wick or whatever. He's got this whole room full of all these weapons. Does he even know the name of them? Does he even know how to use them? Does he even know when is the right time to use them, right? It's like, you know, you don't smash or fly with a, a, you know, a sledgehammer, right? You know, so I think that's a great perspective, especially for guys uh, who feel like, if you're coming into this and you're hearing this podcast and you're hearing like, I am ready to use all the weapons to do all the destruction right now. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a great space to be in to consider that. And the last thing I want to bring up, this, this is just the introduction to the podcast. There's going to be a lot more to come, mm -hmm. but just give you an idea of what you're going to get out of watching this. Um, the most important thing, once you mm -hmm. realize the weapons in your arsenal is to realize who your enemy is mm -hmm. and the enemy is never the person over there it's those three fingers pointing back at you mm -hmm. we're our own worst enemy the only thing we can control is ourselves yep. so when you've learned to harness your weapons it's time to do battle and the only battle worth having is with yourself because that's the only person you can control anyway mm -hmm. And nobody ever went to jail for battling themselves. So, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. So that's 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 it. That's that's what single dad in a nutshell is all about: is dealing with your present cir circumstance, understanding the consequences and the impact it's going to have on your kids. Mm -hmm. Part of being a dad means yeah. you have offspring, yeah. right? And how to effect change in your life. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the beautiful part, right? You're going into battle with the thing that you control and there's good news, right? There's a way out. There's a way through. And you're going to see that in this book and listen to this show. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So pick up your copy. If you haven't already, you can get it on Amazon. Just search single dad field manual for today's single father, uh, or look in the comment section below. Cause we'll post that link there. And, uh, we look forward to having you Certainly look forward to questions, put your, your comments and whatnot, want to hear what you have to say, and we'll, uh, we'll address those in future episodes. So be good to yourself, be good to those around you, and remember, what you do today will have lasting impact on your children. Absolutely.